um, it taught me chess, not checkers. Mm -hmm. and, and what it's done now is when I deal with people in other aspects of business, mm -hmm. they don't realize you're dealing with someone that deals with people every day. Right. So I know you're lying. <laughs> like, I, like, like I, I know you're lying. Yeah. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come from nothing at all? But every day you just want to need all. You know what it's like Every day facing your fear But believing that your blessing is near Do you know what it's like Growing up broken than most But still being devoted the most Do you know what it's like Yeah, that's what the journey's about Yeah, Let me show you how What's going on y'all? This is Justin Owens We're back The Run and Play Show Where we give you the top plays When it comes to business When it comes to leadership Entrepreneurship We're talking about communication Brandon, we talk about it all Today <laughs> I've got a really, really close friend of mine. They actually started off as just a mentor-mentee relationship. I was literally just trying to grow as a speaker and communicator. And then that's developed probably over the last, I don't know, decade plus into a great friendship. But a wealth of knowledge, really, really large personality. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> but a wise, wise businessman. My brother, Brian Bean. Yes, you? sir. I'm ready to run the plate, man. Hey, man. You know, I, appreciate I, you I love here. what you got going on, Thank man. you, bro. I'm going to brag on you through the whole thing. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First of all, you know, shout out to you. You know, you've had a lot of success. And, you know, Jay-Z says, it like, you know, if a person can have success one year, two years, it's, it's, it's called being hot. Right. Right. But but if you can do it long period of time, yeah. that that's when you start measuring a person's greatness. And so for you to be able to do it. Decade after decade. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you know how to be like that. <laughs> but for you to go ahead and add one more after decade. <laughs> I'll stop. It. I'll stop it. <laughs> but, you know, but for you to be able to make no, those adjustments you. and pivots, you yeah. know, I think it says a lot about you because I've seen some people, believe it or not, you can you can tell by the way they dress, by the way they talk, by the way they train, they're still stuck in the generation. Absolutely. So, oh, you still in 1990. Right. right. We're doing it different now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so just, you know, I want to say shout out to you for that. Because no, you thank you, man. Continue to evolve. And I think that's what it's about is continuing to grow as a person. So you've, you've been evident that. And, you know, obviously speaking across the world, you know, it's been it's been magical. Yes, sir. And exciting to watch. Yes, sir. I mean, either either I started really young or I'm really old. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. But yeah, man, it's been 25 years. 25 years of speaking on stages all over the world. Wow. 25 wow. years yeah. from from network marketing to um, showing people how to save, make, and grow money to um, showing people how to change their mindset to animal instincts. To yeah, so I've been able to pivot, man. And yeah, uh, yeah. I watch people like you. Yeah. No, I watch people like you and say, "What would Jo do?" <laughs> well, first thing he would, he would say, "Follow me on." <laughs> you know. So yeah, I watch you, man. I watch a lot of you guys, and I'm proud of y'all, man. I, you, I tell everybody that that I knew coming up that was younger than me. You know, I say I'm proud of you, and I mean that not because I'm older, but just because you guys are the new wave. You know, people my generation started, and hopefully showed you guys that. People who look like us on stage is possible. Yeah, for sure. You know sure. what I'm saying? And then for you know, for every Les Brown that was inspired, Brian Bean, Brian Bean hopefully inspired the Justin Owens. So, you know, we're supposed to keep that that torch going. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what it's about. That's really what the show's about, is being able to take those lessons and, and really pay it forward. Yep. You yep. know, because yep. I think what's interesting about this time that we live in now is like, you know, you think about, you know, I even think about past me, but like, you know, think about your 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 child being able to look back. 30 years of videos and be like, dang, that's how my that's how my grandfather or my great grandfather did it. You know, did it. Yeah. Like, and, I, and you get a chance to, to hear their thought process. And, and like, we didn't have that. Yeah, you know, not at get all. Get some pictures, maybe a polar. <laughs> this is your grandfather. <laughs> oh man, he's we can't nice. Hear him enough. He, but you can hear him. You yeah. can see, and it's like, yeah. and so we've actually, I don't think in, in life really lived, lived in a generation where the average ordinary person can mm. have that, where you can just put out your thoughts and you know, the generation after generation after generation can still hear how. You know, you were thinking in, in, in your philosophy. And that's a great way to look at it. You know, I call it time hopping. You know, we're the, you're right. We're probably the first generation where we are so, our steps and journeys are documented. Yeah. For somebody to be able to look back on. It may be a little grainy. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got some, Even for our parents. We, even for like our parents. Little pictures. Pictures, that's it. We would have we 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 VCR to DVD mm -hmm. to now we streaming yeah. to now, we, you know. So, yeah, absolutely, man. I, I love the fact that. We're young enough to appreciate the technology because that's why we work so hard to archive as much of it as we can. Yeah. So if something 
happens to us, God forbid, we got a whole catalog yeah. that will outlive us. You know, yeah, it's absolutely. important. Yeah, I, I know you're talking about network marketing, and I want to touch on that um, probably a little later in the show. Yeah, um, because I think it. Or actually, we can talk about it now because I think it's a it's a form of business that a lot of people misunderstand. Oh yeah, right? big time. Like, oh, it's, it's you know one of those things, and I'm like, but yeah. you know, I for me because I and even for you, I know at this point you've invested a lot of money into other traditional businesses. Absolutely. And I'm like, listen, for the average person to start, this is this night for the this ain't for the faint of heart. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, know? not at all. And I, I think with you know network marketing, direct sales, whether it's an affiliate program or you know home based business, whatever it is, the ability to be able to start off with a low level of entry. Yes. Like I look, some it's funny because I was like, man, I used to be in companies that'd be like 140 a month, and I used to be like, man, this is expensive, <laughs> right? And then you know, like, like for instance, my brother just sent me an invoice for one of the trucks we got yesterday. It was like 6,500 dollars. We had to do some registration. That was eight thousand. Eight thousand like, dollars, yeah. That, that 140 ain't sounding too bad. Not, right now. Yeah, so, man. I know that's initially where you got your start. Network marketing. Right? Yes. So what what was the thing that attracted you to it? Honestly. I I never I was 19 years old. It was a mistake how I actually got in the industry. The gentleman that came through my mom's kitchen was talking to my mom about it. Wow. And I tell people all the time, anybody that knows my mom, she she ain't the one. She ain't, she's not gonna do it, okay? <laughs> so it's not a knock against her. She just don't have the patience. Yeah. And she's not gonna go out there and talk to people. She's just not the one. But I heard two words I never forget: residual income. Hmm. And to any networkers or aspiring networkers is watching, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Yeah. All I heard was every time we pay our phone bills, we get paid. It's called residual income. This is back in 1996. Every time we pay our phone bills, we get paid. And I'm walking through. I might have been eating a ham sandwich. I'm 19. I was like, what? Wow. He was like, yeah, man. You know, we get paid. It's called residual income. You know, you, you do something one time, and you get paid over and over again. From that point forward, I promise you, I retired when I was 22. So when I was 19, I started. Three years later, I fired my boss, and I never worked since. Wow. That one term, residual income, and the explanation of doing something one time and getting paid over and over again, I started making parallels. Hmm. I'm like, okay, an actor can do a movie, and he can get it. Yeah. Uh, a, a musician can do a song. Or a rapper can do something, they can get it. How am I going to get it? I can't sing. I can't act. You know, Where's my residual income going to come from? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Man, I said... I'm not going to lie to you. I was too young to believe, and I was too naive and young to believe that it wasn't possible. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I didn't have a yeah, voice yeah. telling me I yeah. couldn't, you know, mm -hmm. what is that? Is it a pyramid? I ain't yeah. know that. I was like, that just makes sense. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I bring in some people, and they get some people, yeah. and they get some people, and I get paid off all these people. Yeah. I was too naive to think that that didn't make sense. It's mm -hmm. when you get older that you start talking yourself out of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And man, 25 years later, I'm still getting residuals. <laughs> like Jay-Z said it best. Back then, I was crazy straight. Yeah. I'm still getting money from things I did in 88. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, what is one thing you hate about network marketing? What I hate about it, honestly, I hate that the startup being so low in most companies brings that mentality with it mm -hmm. for people who claim they want to make so much more. Yeah. That's yeah. what I don't like about it. Yeah. I don't like how everybody wants the house on the hill, the mansions, the land, the plane, and the yacht. And the first thing out their mouth is, now how do I make this part free? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, does the 119, yeah. the 149, does yeah. the 219 go yeah. away if three for free? Yeah. And it, that's the part I don't like about it is getting you to see that champagne taste and beer money, you got to overcome that fast. Yeah. It's a business. You have to invest more mm -hmm. than this initial startup. Mm -hmm. You got to invest in your mind. You have to invest in your training. But I don't like how people expect so much and want to give so little. Yeah, it's the mentality, and that's why I spend eighty-five to ninety percent of my time working on your mindset because yeah. the money's not going to come if you don't change the way you think. Yeah, that's right. what I hate about it. Yeah. I, I think for me, I hate the transition periods oh. when, when people switch up on. <laughs> hey man, that was just cool. Ain't no we, law. Ain't no law to. Like, oh, but yeah, it like, should be. You know, but for me, it's like it's. It's just business, yeah. right? And it's like, I'm, one, for me, I, I do a lot more stuff outside of network market. This is people, recently, they don't follow me. I thought, oh, you, make sure you stay there. Yeah, right, because <laughs> you you missed a huge opportunity oh, to work yeah. with you outside of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's and, crazy. And there's been some people, they mess with me, hey, man, you do this for me? Like, no, but like, you, no, if you if you can't rock with me publicly, don't ask me for no favors on the side. On the side. But it's because, like, this is relationship marketing. Correct. But people don't understand how to maintain relationships. And I understand, like, there's sometimes where it's like, all right, it's let a little me, rocky. I, I let you do your thing for a little while, but I still got you. But I think a lot of times people don't 
they don't have that same feeling from like cor- like corporate America. They'll send you away a lot of times. Oh, Brian's been here for ten years and he's going to Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> We're right. gonna throw him a party. Throw him a party. You know? they look at it like a cool lateral yeah, yeah. move it's over like, here. No, it's like oh no, it's personal. Yeah, don't it's call personal. Me. And then it's like man, why? But why is that? And and it's because it's because. That person was wrapped up in your dream, your ideal. I'm not saying it's right. What happens is most people in network marketing have never seen that type of success Mm -hmm. at certain levels. So when they start making $10,000, $30,000, $40,000, $50,000, $60,000 a month, and then you decide for a lot of different reasons that people don't understand at a high level, Mm -hmm. we don't just move. Something typically happened that we're making a move to protect us all. Yeah. But when you make that move, their goals, dreams, and aspirations were wrapped up in their first run. Yeah. There's a reason a bank gives a college student a credit card. It's because the, the credit card is saying, we're the first to believe in you. So if I can give you a credit card your freshman year, mm-hmm. studies show you a bank with me for life. Oh, wow. Because I'm the first person that believed in you. You know what I'm saying? So Chase, now, Chase, when I didn't have nothing, Chase gave me $500 credit card. Mm -hmm. So what happens is because a lot of times their first experience was so great, changing it means you're disloyal to my goals and dreams. Mm. So they can't ride with you no more, even though you're the person that got them there. You wouldn't have made $80,000 a month without me. You wouldn't have made $40,000 a month without me. But now you think I'm going to make a bad decision when I actually – have more to lose than you. So the emotions get involved. Mm-hmm. So when you make a when you make a move and everybody's not with it, it's typically because one or two things. One, they can't do it again. Yeah. That's usually what it is. Yeah. <laughs> they can't they can't build twice. So they gotta get mad at somebody. That somebody's gonna be the person who's making the move. Yeah. Or two, they're loyal to the first opportunity Mm -hmm. that gave them a chance like giving a freshman a visa when he's six uh 18 years old yeah 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 Yeah, and i agree with that i think and i think that's something that has to change i think the other thing i think has to change and i think it has to change with the people in the industry for the owners to change it yeah it's like you know like like sometimes you're like you bring the customers. They be like those are our customers. Oh yeah. Like, no, 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 no. You yeah, didn't do, no, you no. do no presentation. <laughs> no, no, no. You didn't have this database before me. <laughs> you, you didn't know these people. <laughs> <laughs> but not these young customers. <laughs> okay, well, why, don't you, why don't you call? Why don't you right. do something? Exactly. Like, why, and so I'm like, I hate that. I, I'm with, I'm with, the, I, and I understand it, right? But I'm just like, I think, I think there has to be a better way to um, position it. Yes. To where it's like it's more of a, a fair thing. And I think some companies have started to do it the right way and, and owners have, have started to adjust. But I think the change is going to come from people. Yes, it always that, does. Because it's, it's when people, when, when owners start realizing, well, you can't control people by this stuff. No, right? no, you because, can't. Because people are getting smarter. They understand how to build brands. They understand how to how to leverage themselves. And it's like, now I choose to build this business. With you. I choose to be a part of this, but I don't have to. Right. And and that's a dynamic I don't think existed before. 10 years ago. No. 15 years ago, it's like, oh, no, you need this check, so we own you. Yeah. It's like, no. Not really. No. And, and social media works to makes the world smaller. Yeah. See, all, these owners, these owners, a lot of times haven't adjusted to the new things that are going on. Exactly. Social media makes the world smaller, and no marketing is a little more difficult to build these days because because of social media, everybody's distracted. Yeah. And we always forget that people post their best moments; they don't post their worst moments, Thanks. right? So when you when you're busy building something and you see such a, such such over here made twenty five thousand, and just the mere fact that you looked. It can take you away mentally from what you're doing. Right. So it's a it's you have to be really, really rooted in personal growth and self development and the things that you feel like are gonna benefit your family long term mm-hmm. or these founders and social media and looking left to right would distract you. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I would not have had the success I had today if I chased everything that everybody else was chasing. Yeah. That's you know, true. and I ain't I ain't struck out yet, Jay. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been, yeah. I've done quite well. I had, a, I had some good runs. Yeah. Like, what, what what is the best thing that you learned from network marketing? How to um, play chess, not checkers. Hmm. Okay, Talk I've learned how to play chess, not checkers. You taught me how to play chess, by the way. I know, and then you end up beating me like every time. <laughs> like, I learned after playing with you. I'm actually a better teacher. <laughs> once I show you how the pieces move, and once I show you the the, the uh, concept of the game, don't ask me for no strategies. But you know, but you beat you, me a whole bunch. Of I beat you a whole bunch of times. Okay, I gotta and, figure it and out. And look, once you start beating me over and over and over, I was like, okay, Jada turned the corner. <laughs> 
and I closed my account. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to play again. My job but is you got it. really good, man. Yeah. And, and, but no, no, no marketing. I forgot I taught you how to play chess. That's funny. It um it taught me chess, not checkers. Mm-hmm. And and what it's done now is when I deal with people in other aspects of business, mm-hmm. they don't realize you're dealing with someone that deals with people every day. Right. So I know you're lying. <laughs> like I like like I I know you're lying. Yeah, yeah, like I, sure. I know. Your ego is big. Mm-hmm. I know that um, you're hurt by something in the past, and in this in this conversation, you're trying to take it out on me. Yeah. So what it's what it's taught me how to do is control my emotions and what I allow myself to absorb from other people. Because when you're in network marketing, you you become your organization's pastor, yeah, philosopher, mm-hmm. mentor, coach, trainer, friend, uncle, nephew, yeah. brother. In law, you become all these things. Mm-hmm. And by doing that, you you learn how to deal with multiple people on multiple different levels. Mm-hmm. So here's this person in another line of work mm-hmm. that doesn't know he's dealing with a person that's been dealing with people directly for 25 years. Right. And you think, I don't, I have, I've met you, people like you 2,000 times. Yeah. So what note marketing has taught me is how to deal with different personalities, relieve myself of a lot of stress and overcome and have high conflict resolution skills. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or not even get that in martial arts. Yeah, yeah. That in martial arts. Martial arts has kept me out of more trouble. You've been with me on one occasion for sure. Mm-hmm. You've seen me respond on another occasion that yeah. we talked about, but it, <laughs> that, that I honestly regret. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Man, good morning. <laughs> When I come out, when I do like this, that does not mean I'm not ready. But um, but no, it just taught me how to deal. It's it's increased my conflict resolution skills for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think I think definitely communication for me. I, I I would say I learned to stay off of the emotional roller coaster. Yeah, you know because yeah. you know because business has a lot of like ups and downs, and you I think I just started to learn to enjoy the ride because you know I'd be so excited to begin and something happened. I'm like, oh my goodness, and it was like. Now I just be like, all right, let me just be cool. Like, it, be cool. Nothing, nothing, not, nothing that, that's here. Somebody come, it's cool. Somebody leave, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> like, everybody be like, Jess, why you all so chill? Like, man, I just seen so much stuff. Dog. It's just, hey, whatever happened, it's cool. It's cool. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> we'll figure it out. As long as I'm still alive. We'll figure it we'll, out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure and it I, out. And I, and I think that that's helped me even in other businesses because sometimes I be like, man, I don't even feel like doing this. And, I'm, and then a month later, something turn around. I'm like, man, I'm glad I stayed around. Yeah. I could easily have. You know, close the door and, and and quit on it. So I think I think yeah. it's that. And uh, like you said, you start you 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 are able to collapse and compress time on education and people because you meet so many people so fast. Right. I can size them up. And, and I'm like, okay, I don't know you, but I know somebody that was just like you. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen like five of them. Uh, so I know where this is going. <laughs> I know people just like, like you. So I know how to handle it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You remind me of Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you were Steve. And that ain't always a good thing. Yeah, 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 yeah so. absolutely. But it, it teaches you more about people. And I, I, I think as of recently, I didn't, uh, I've learned, I learned that I wasn't as empathetic as I needed to be, mm. you know, with people and like even um, with just like certain things with like depression and anxiety. And, and, and I started really talking to people and I'm like, you know, my initial thought was like, hey, man, that's the thing. Oh, calm down. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, no, this it's, is, it's, this real, is, it's real. real deal. It's real. Yeah, it is. And real. It took yeah. me a while to embrace that. And so there were parts of my earlier career where I probably could have done better had I understood it. That anxiety is real. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I agree with that. I, yeah. I think that's a I think that's a profound statement you just made. Yeah. As you get older and get more seasoned, you start to realize that. The young me would have been like, look, you get up on stage. Yeah. All right, 200 of us, you going first. Yeah. And you, oh, we all nervous. Shake it off. Mm-hmm. But then one of my friends almost like died. <laughs> Passed out. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's real. Like, you're really, yeah, you're really, wow. yeah. you're really afraid right now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so come on, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Yeah. I do the meeting. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, so yeah, it, it is real. And and what's funny, you say this, man. I want to plug this quick Netflix thing. I don't get paid for this. Mm-hmm. Social Dilemma, man. Have you seen that? I haven't. Jay, social dilemma. Okay. Social dilemma. Watch it, man. Okay. Social dilemma is about how depression, and the reason I'm bringing this up, depression and anxiety, how these social media platforms have ramped this thing up so much to where it's changing the way we think and how we feel about ourselves. Hmm. 
especially middle aged girls. I'm not gonna ruin it for anybody. Yeah, yeah. But I, I watch it at least once a month just to make sure that this phone doesn't control me. Hmm. Followers don't control me. That stuff don't matter. How many comments I get don't matter. My lifestyle is not a depiction of how many shares I get. Right. Yeah. My um followers is not a um uh contingent upon my net worth. Mm -hmm. But social media and the mere fact that you, I'll give you one example, when you take your finger and scroll, they got that from the slot machine mentality, where when you scroll, your mind automatically says something new is going to pop up and I can't wait to see what it is. So the engineers made it where when you scroll and your notifications wow. pop, your endorphins automatically make you feel better that somebody sent you something, somebody commented on something you posted, somebody shared something you posted, mm -hmm. so it makes you feel validated. Well, when you're dealing with young kids, when they don't get that reaction, they're not mature enough to be like me, like, I don't care if y'all like it or not, I just right. put it out there for those who want to see it. Mm -hmm. They go, no one likes me. Mm. No mm -hmm. one shared my content. Yeah. My TikTok is not going viral. Yeah. Hers is. Mm -hmm. So they say um, comparison Minus perspective equals depression. Comparison minus, minus perspective, perspective equals, equals depression. depression. So kids are now getting more. Our, forget kids. The, I brought this up real quick because you talked about depression and it's real. Yeah, it is. People are getting more and more depressed these days, believe it or not, because they don't have the right perspective right. and they're comparing themselves to somebody else's world. Yeah. When I was growing up, Jay, and you too, you, you're, you would be considered millennial, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm Generation X. Yeah. Jay, we played outside. Yeah. For sure. We rode bikes. I, I was. I, I mean, we knew how to change the. If the bike chain came yeah. out, we know how to put, put it, it back, back on. on. Yeah. We know how to oil it back yeah. up. Make yeah. sure it get back on track. Yeah. We know how to fix stuff. We didn't have a phone to let us know what Keisha down the street was even. Right. I didn't even know her family was rich. Right. Because because <laughs> <laughs> we Keisha was cool. We just riding bikes yeah. or whatever. Now I I know who rich, who mom got money, where they going, who dad got money, where they. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here looking at myself. So these kids are like, man, we ain't living like such and such. We didn't have that back in the day. We just appreciated and loved everybody outside playing. That's true. So, the, so what I'm saying, long-winded way of me saying, depression is real. Yeah. But these apps and notifications, watch Social Dilemma. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I don't get paid for that. Yeah. But it's all the engineers who develop this stuff telling you that they regret it now. Mm. Yeah. Google, Facebook, Instagram, former engineers telling you. Had we known it was going to affect people like this, we would have did it different. Wow, it's deep. Yeah, it's deep. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. That 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 that's that's. I it's deep. Check it, check it out. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. gonna make you turn off a few of your notifications. Yeah, yeah. It is. I turned yeah. off like eighty percent of my notifications. I'm about to say I don't really have a lot of notifications yeah. on my phone because like literally, like one, I I literally post and I I try to hop off. Yeah. You know, and if I'm on it, I'm just trying to pay attention to like trends and stuff What's like going that. On? And then, I, then I'm like, man, this yeah. Is, Unless we run an ad. Like, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> now I'm looking at. Analytics. <laughs> Those are different kind of notifications. <laughs> right. I like the ones right. making money. I need to know how my ad is performing. Yeah, but, but other like than the, that, the likes and stuff like that, it's just like, man, I, I'm not really concerned with that. But yeah. Uh, but I think that does come from network marketing, man. Because like, man, I used, I you talk to ten people a day and everybody say no. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, like I think that's another thing, and I and I will change from network marketing. But it's like, what what. The face to face rejection on the phone rejection and people just disappearing rejection taught me. I was like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> it's easy. Cause you was in sales. Yeah, it was, it's like yeah. I was like, okay, this is this is nothing. In fact, I think that's one of the things that made coming back to the industry easier is because you know I had that the uh telecommunications company. Mm -hmm. When I had went through all that stuff and I came back to network market, I was like, Oh, this is easy. Y'all ain't gotta deal with half of the stuff you have. Half the stuff you're dealing with in real sales. And, and uh, I was like, man, this is, you know, something, it's, especially what you can build here if you can get past the mindset of, like, the rejection and people saying no's and all this kind of stuff. Same thing with, like, social media. I actually think people can be really good at it if they stop worrying about what people think and how people are. Just, like, put out stuff that's true to you and, and improve on you and start worrying about everybody else and your time will come. Yeah. I, there's people that have millions of followers that get less engagement than people that's got... 20,000 20, because now they've learned how I got to stay in touch and just put out what's true to me and these people haven't adjusted. That's it, man. And and I, I don't care what anybody says. Harvard Business School, military, not knocking against our military, uh, Harvard Business School, PhD, whatever. I will put my network marketing or a person who spends 10 years in a network marketing successful training mm -hmm. organization and company. Yeah, That's the key. Not just any company. Yeah, for but sure. a successful culture with successful training. You get that 10 years, I'll put that up against any experience on the planet. I agree. You will come out of that 
uh, sharp, more sharp, more appreciative. Um, your, your level of gratitude, your appreciation for life, your understanding about money, your understanding about friendships, your understanding about relationships, your frameworks, your compartmentalization, your, uh, your uh, perspective, your perception, your vision, everything will magnify by 10. Yeah. And that was up to you what you do with that and take that further. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, I got a lot of people in my organization, man. They're not even doing no marketing anymore, but they're millionaires because of what I taught them in that game. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people don't they don't appreciate this personal growth, man, way better than the comp plan. Yeah, it is. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. What is like cuz a lot of times with these podcasts I watch them and everybody's always telling me like the, the highlights, their success. And you share whatever detail you want, but like can you share with us like a a, a challenging time or like what the hardest time in your entrepreneurship career, but not just the time, but like how you got through it? Yeah. I say this all the time. People don't believe this, but one of the most challenging things I ever had to do was decide to break away from my mentor. Hmm. Yep. We're still cool to this day. I talked to him yesterday. Oh, wow. Okay. But it was the most challenging thing I ever had to do because, long story short, some personal beefs became street beefs, became, I mean, became network marketing beefs, became street beefs. Oh, wow. Um, my house got broken into. Um, the only thing that they stole was my network marketing notes. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not funny. <laughs> no, no, it's funny. No, it is funny. It oh is funny. God, it's, it's actually hilarious. Bro, that's you know, oh the, description, the description from my neighbor fit perfectly. My <laughs> former business partners, like height, weight, <laughs> the, the car. <laughs> <laughs> you can laugh. I'm it's sorry, funny. man. It's funny. So they took your notepad. They, they took my notes. But you know, not not the for, electronics, but, but for not the cash. Networker. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you, go, you know like, your boy. Like, that's a million dollars. It's like it's like uh, what, what did uh, Drake say? A lot of these like if somebody found a BlackBerry with the side scroll because it's like he had all his all bars, this stuff. Yeah, stuff. yeah, I remember that. All his notes. notes. Like, but he had, he had a to big go, reward he had to go for do that. it again. Yeah, yeah. Like, but I just had to go do it again. But yeah, it's, it's that it's that serious. So for y'all to understand, if y'all don't really take notes and really study the game or whatever you do, my, yeah. imagine somebody taking your whole note, my whole catalog, catalog of trainings, ideas that you have, they stole and it's it. gone. It's, yeah, that's the only thing they stole. So all roles pointed to some people that I had just fell out with. Wow. So me being who I am, long story short, I made some calls and um. You know, I, I keep a couple of guys around me that don't care nothing about business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I made some calls and, um, you know, I had to let them know that it's been acknowledged and it's getting now it's getting elevated to another level. Mm -hmm. So needless to say, uh, they were very, very nervous at the next meeting they did publicly. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my guys looked at me and said, man, I don't know what it is, but. Some don't feel right in here, B. And I, cause I didn't tell him what we were going for. Mm -hmm. And I was like, just just chill out. Just I gave him what's called what I call plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't even know why y'all here. Cause if I would have told them why they were here, they'd have set it off. Mm -hmm. So I had to send a message that now we going from personal beefs to network marketing beefs. Now it went to the street thing. Mm -hmm. So cooler heads prevailed. Nothing happened at the meeting. That was just my way of saying we in the building. If anybody got anything they want to say, they can say it. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time in my career that I said, you know what? Things are starting to escalate, so let me just spin off on my own. And that's when I started. Back then, I was known as the Eighth Wonder of the World, mm -hmm. and I started Eighth Wonder Enterprises. Yep, I remember that. Yeah, so that, that's when a lot of people got to know. So in retrospect, it was the most difficult thing on the planet, but honestly, had I stayed under them, my I probably wouldn't be Brian Bean. Right. People would know me as the first lieutenant, mm -hmm. you know, third in command or whatever. When I became Eighth Wonder Enterprises and started calling myself the Eighth Wonder of the World, and uh, to me, arguably one of the best trainers in network marketing, mm -hmm. people started rocking with me and viewing me as a independent. Yeah. And that kind of took my speaking career to another level outside of network marketing. Yeah. So that was very, very difficult, though, because it got it got personal. Mm -hmm. It almost got physical. A lot of rumors start flying. Who broke up my house? Who would who, who, who would take your notes? People close to me saying, come on, Brian. I mean. Come on, man, the truck, <laughs> them, the witness, the notes, it's them. Yeah. I'm like, well, I didn't see it. I don't want to roll up. Yeah. We slapped the wrong person. <laughs> we, we get in trouble, this and that. So it was very difficult when those lines got blurred and it became a street thing. Yeah. Luckily, thanks to network marketing, I calmed down yeah. and didn't nothing like that happen again for 20 years. Yeah. 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 That's strong, man. I'm glad, yeah. glad you got through that. Yeah. I, I, 
You helped me with something probably within the last year because, you know, I, I've, I've talked about it on the show here before, but, you know, I was divorced like a year and a half ago and some change at mm-hmm. this point. And I was like, listen, it was at a point where it was like, all right, we either going to have a terrible relationship yeah, or, you know, we Quite. can have a, a cordial one. And, yeah. I, and I, I reached out to you because I know, you know, you and, you know, Makai and her, his, his mom, like, yeah. y'all not together, but I was like, bro, I got to make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> Should I make this cool? Yeah. Or should it just be everybody comes to me for that? Yeah. And I was yeah. like, but I was like, I was like, how do you? Because I think it's important not only for for the the, the child, yeah, right, but because it's like you see, you that person still gonna be in your life, and I I don't know if you can speak to that, but I know there's yeah. some people that are in that situation. And man, like, look, I can speak to that for sure. Look, I don't know people's personal situations, so I can't give you a blanket statement. But here's here's one generalization I can make. Mm-hmm. Even when me and Makai and his mom, me and Makai's mom were going through our thing, the one thing that stayed consistent Mm -hmm. is the betterment of the child has to come first. Yeah. It's not about you. It's not about me. We've decided we're not together no more. That's fine. Yeah. But if the betterment of the child comes first, it should relieve both sides of any egos pressures, um, um, arguments, disagreements, fights. As long as that's the case, we can always say, hold on, but what's what's best for the child, though? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I mean, I'll be honest, I, I, I even had to tell a couple of judges that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what, what's, what's best for the child? Though? I understand what you're saying, but what's best for the child? Mm-hmm. And, and after a while, we just decided to throw all of them that were making it murky out of our business, mm. and let's do what we – because think about it. To all the parents, who knows what's best for the child? Somebody in the robe that don't live with y'all, don't know nothing. Yeah. And I'm not saying there ain't people out there who don't need the robe, because mm-hmm. there's some yeah. people out there who need the robe. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, if we got some common sense and some money, why can't we decide amongst us what's best for the child instead of a third party having to decide that? Yeah. So we went through that. Probably the best thing that ever happened because now. To me, he's the he's the coolest of them all. Yeah, so when you walked in, I said, like, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice yeah. little swag on him. Yeah, he's the coolest. He's the coolest kid on the planet. He really is, and that's because he's got two level-headed parents that earn residual income. Money um, is not his problem, mm-hmm. and his his state of affairs and his upbringing was more important. Than our egos, yeah. That's you know amazing. what I'm saying? That's the main thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's that's strong. Yeah, so, uh, you're one of my favorite trainers, you know, in the industry, and you've even helped me with like stuff as I was starting out as a speaker, and sometimes I even still call you now. Like, hey man, yeah, tell me how we do that thing one more time. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> what, what's your process for like? I, I know we have some people that you know maybe not know marketing, but they aspire to be speakers and stuff like that. Yeah, what's your process for? developing and crafting a speech or training can you shed some light into your your thought process yeah for sure so the first thing i do is and i teach this in my in my speaker course there are four types of keynotes first i decide which one i want to do Mm -hmm. right you got what's called a numerical you got what's called a chronological you got what's called a storyteller and you got what's called analogous Mm -hmm. those are the four that i coin in my personal opinion you know a um a a numerical is five ways to peak interest Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying Chronological is five steps to peak interest. Yep. There's a difference, right? Mm-hmm. First thing I do is decide what type of keynote I want to do. Yep. Am I going to tell a story that's going to bring it all back around to something? You're really good at that. Yeah. I remember yeah. the painter, you yeah. know, man, Mr. Renoir. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that, was, that was early in, the, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's what his name is. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, Mr. Renoir, Renoir yeah. the painter. And you, you would take them on this journey and tell a story, but it had a point connected to it. Yep. My um, brand that I'm known for is my instincts training. Mm-hmm. I got about now 24 different animals that companies hire me to come in and train on these animals Mm -hmm. and um i'll teach animal instincts and how if you had the x of an owl or the x of a mantis or the y of a tiger how you would be better in life and business that's an analogous training yeah so the first thing i do is decide which one i want to cultivate yeah then what you guys want to do is create what's called a funnel start wide Mm -hmm. And then come narrow, 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 thin, 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 and narrow it down to what the one thing you want them to remember when you leave. Yep. What experience do you want them to have? And more importantly, how how do you want them to feel 
when you're when you're gone. Yep. So I start off and I put everything in the funnel and then I narrow it down and make sure I get down to, okay, when they leave, if nothing else, they should remember this. Yep. So the first thing I do is define what keynote I'm going to write. I got a million numericals. I got a million chronological. I got a million storyteller. And I got a million analogous. The last two are very difficult. You got to be experienced. Yep. The first two are what I teach my beginners. And then after that, we dump everything in the funnel and then we end with the point that you want to remain standing. Yep. After a while, you can reverse the funnel. When you get really good, you flip the funnel upside down and you start with a small point yeah. and you end. <laughs> like, this is what I want y'all to get. Right. Yeah. We're going yeah, to break, yeah. yeah. break that down. Here's where I want you to start. And then we're going to break down how we got there. Yeah. So after a while, you can flip the funnel. Yeah. But that's my, that's my thought process. Honestly, after a while, and people don't realize this, but it's true, um, I don't even write keynotes anymore. I get on stage and pretty much have what I call codes in my head from me thinking about the keynote way before it's crafted. So, for example, I'll be on stage um, next month in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit down at night and write the keynote. I've been writing the keynote for the past 30 days. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that comes from, honestly, me being an English major and having to cram a lot of information fast. Yep. You know, I would literally study for a vocabulary test and look at the words and I just taught myself how to memorize all these definitions 15 minutes before I go in here. And if, as long as you don't say anything to me, don't talk to me. I can take the test with what I, for the photographic memory of looking at. Now, I don't understand the words, mm -hmm. but I, I know what I memorized on paper. Mm -hmm. So now, after a while, you'll be able to do so many keynotes that you won't have to write them anymore. I'm not saying I don't take notes. Yeah, for sure. What I'm saying is I'm preparing for Vegas 60 days ago. Yep. So when I get on stage, I've been I've been doing this thing in my head yep. two months. Yeah. So that's how I do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I what is it? What does somebody say when it comes to speaking? It's like it's three types of speeches. The one you prepared, the one you gave, and the one you wish you gave. <laughs> <laughs> so you always gonna have you always gonna have those three. And so yeah. I think I think it started like loosening me up as far as speaking because it's like, bro, no matter what happens, I, every time you go back, you're like, oh man, if I went through this point, oh, oh, you're gonna critique it. I get I could do this differently. One thing I always tell speakers now is just always know how you're gonna start and know how you're gonna get out of it. For sure. Because I see some people, I'll be like, you, you don't know how to leave. You should have wrapped it. Just leave, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. But because people don't you know when going. to leave, they kept going and they start rambling. So, like, you know, for, for the speakers, I think this is I, – I, I would go back and take notes on what he just said. Yeah. But simple, too, is, like, just start. You know what I mean? And, and no I, I hate when people start, like, I've never done this before. I'm real nervous. First of all, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> nobody cares if you're nervous. Right. Nobody cares if it's your first time. Right. In fact – That ain't giving you no excuse. It ain't helping you. Yeah. Right? In yeah. fact, now yeah. we, we might want you out of here sooner. That's now right. Because you, you're telling us you don't know what you're doing. That's right. But so, so just having a strong start. And then just make sure you know how to get out of there. Anytime I get uncomfortable and I'm like, okay, wait, just where you going? I'm like, all right, you know, it's time to jump to the end. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to go down the rabbit hole. I don't road. know what your definition of success is. <laughs> <laughs> your go-to clothes. That's it. And then, yeah. I, and then I'm out. Yeah. And I, I think that can, that can help a lot of people. And, and that's another thing that we're marketing help with. Because it's like, man, you're doing so many presentations and talking so many times. Like, I feel like I got a Rolodex of trainings all day. All day long to so, pick from. You do it so many times. Yeah. yeah. My, you, you know, have your go-to. If you're a speaker and you're an aspiring speaker, have a go-to. You know, you might start off with one keynote that you can be hired for. Mm -hmm. Just one keynote. I'm known as the guy or girl who is um, tells this story yep. and, and got this result. Have one keynote. Mm -hmm. I started with one animal. It was inspired by Jim Rohn with the ant. Yep. And I started studying other animals. And now I'm at about... 24, 18 published, 24 in my head. Wow. I got six, I got six that I haven't released yet. So start with one keynote, and then from there, you can start expanding and getting hired for different things. Maybe the same topic, but you'll be able to deliver it in different ways. Yeah. So here's what I tell the guys, man. Look, you're on stage or you're on the Zoom or whatever. You you already have, again, network marketing, automatic edification because these guys are here to see you. Yep. So don't get up there talking about, you know, I've never done this before and this and that. Yep. As far as they're concerned, you're already on somewhat of an elevated platform because we, we didn't come to see them. Right. That's true. So your posture has to be one from the outset. These guys are here to see me. So obviously I'm a master of a subject matter that they're interested in. Mm. Don't worry about Anything but given the information that you have because it's something clearly that they don't know. So now all you can do is work on your improvement and your delivery. 
But all that anxiety. No, let me let me let me take that back. <laughs> anxiety is real. Anxiety is real. <laughs> yep. But getting up there and admitting to it yep. is something that doesn't give you any brownie points. Yeah, yeah. It, does, yeah, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't help you. Yep. Yeah. And, and just give, give me those four types. Of tra- is it four tra- training? Four types of keynotes. Yeah. Can, can you yeah. say it one more time? Yeah. So you got numerical, mm-hmm. chronological, yep. a storyteller, and analogous. analogous yep. yep. And those last two are the most difficult. Yeah. Um, the first when when you when me and you first met. Right, we, you were you were um, signing up for my speaker thing. Yep. We did. I don't know if you remember. I still remember. We did an analogous, and that, that's how I was yeah, I so impressed with you. Was on the vision. Micro, yeah, vision. It's yeah, on vision. Yeah. If, you know, so funny. I was so impressed with you because most people. I, I let you, I let you don't forget what you're about to say, but I wouldn't start them off with no analogous. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do chronological. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. You're gonna tell me the five steps. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you we start yeah. off with microscope, telescope, yeah. binoculars, mm-hmm. and um, glasses. I think, and yeah. we did an analogous training on vision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Go you ahead. know what's so yeah. funny is I'm actually still building that training. So yeah. I'm literally, like as a leader, because you know I do a lot of leadership training. Now. Yeah. I was like as a leader, you have to have two different eyes. Yep. Yeah. And one of them has to have a microscope, and the other one has to have a telescope. telescope yep. One of them has to be able to look at the stuff close up, pay attention to the details. The other one, I can't be so focused on what's happening today. I got to still be able to look out. So I'm like, that's one that we started, I don't know. Ten years ten ago. Ten years ago. No, yeah. Pro- yeah, probably longer More than, than that. that, yeah. yeah. It's probably longer than that, but yeah. at least ten. At least ten. And I'm like, I'm still, still building on adding it. stuff to it and, different, and, and training on different parts of yep. it. That's actually one I'm going to be having up coming up soon. And I was Come like, on, yeah. man. Hey, you know hey, man. Just, just hey, man, shoot me a plug. <laughs> no, no, I, I call it uh, expansion and contraction. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, you know, microscope, telescope, when we did that one, but expansion and contraction. Mm-hmm. You got to have enough contraction to focus. But you got to have a vision to expand. Yep. So we say the same things a different way. Mm-hmm. Anybody ever stole your content? Oh, all the time. Everybody, <laughs> how do you? <laughs> Somebody's like, hey, man, you mind if I tell the story? I'm like, yeah, long you said you got to have justice. You got, and they going to say it one time. <laughs> one time. How, how do you feel when somebody don't give you credit for something you know you created? You know Does what? it bother you? Or is it humility? I, I mean, is it um, flattering? It's, it, it used to bother me, right? It, it, it used to bother me even with clothing. It, But then I started realizing, man, like, that's, like, people knock off Gucci and Louis Vuitton and, like all the great things in the world, people are going to take it. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I, I, I've modeled stuff from people, and it took me a long time to be able to make stuff my own. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you know, they're just in their process where they haven't been able to, you know, tweak it. The only time I had an issue, one time, I, I told a story one time, and I got off stage, the guy was like, man, that was good, man. I can't remember if you got that from me or if I got that from you. I said, bro, you know you got that from me. <laughs> <laughs> let's not, yeah, that's the guilt. Let's, let's not do that. Yeah. That- <laughs> You, you definitely got to reach. And that, and that, but I said it. I was like, don't, that's not y'all saying that to I definitely, I don't watch none of your videos, bro. No disrespect. But don't, don't do that. I, don't I didn't do. get that from you. Yeah, that was guilt. Yeah. That was guilt. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, no, it doesn't bother me. But, but it used to. They used to. Yeah. Even if somebody takes the speech or the words of the speech, they can't take the delivery. They, no. It, the, the, way, the way that you, you would deliver something, and even the way that I deliver something, is totally different. Totally different. And, and it's the experiences that you have that, Allows it to connect with people. Correct. And in fact, a lot of times, it's not even just the story that's really special. It's the way you led up to the stuff. Correct. That got there, got anyway. there anyway. A lot of people don't understand that. They be like, all right, let me just say this piece, and I think it's going to be great. And it's like, it's it, cool. it, it didn't deliver yeah, the same. Yeah. Walt Disney said it best. They can take the um, the thing, but they can never take the magic. Oh, yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, they, Walt Disney said, because somebody asked them, you know, what if somebody tries to do all these parts? Like, they may be able to take the thing, but they'll never be able to take the magic. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think the, the 2022 version, they, they can copy you, but the pace won't be the same. There you go. You know? There you go. Uh, I yeah. like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody you would never do business with again? You don't have to say their name. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Absolutely. So, okay. So how do you, because. I mention names too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's your show, but yeah, absolutely. It's, pre- it's people I would never do business with again. Yeah, yeah. yeah you ain't going to bite me twice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. yeah. What? What does that like? Because for me, like you know, a, a big part of my forgiveness probably over the last six years was like I had to let go of a situation, a bad situation. Yeah. Business, but it allowed me to elevate. Like I had, respected you for the, that. The thing is, had I not went through that, who's to say I would have propelled to where I am? So it's, yeah, as 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 frustrated as I was by it, I'm actually grateful for it because mm. when I look back, I'm like, man, maybe had that not happened, I'd still be in where a similar to, place. I'm yeah. like. In a sense, I'm actually grateful that that even that situation even happened. I still never rock with you in business, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. But like, what? How do how do you how have you learn how to make those transition when this when it is time to move on? Man, I went to therapy for this. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is real. I went to therapy for this. Yeah. Because the way I was brought up, 
You just are who you are. Mm-hmm. Be nice to people. Be kind to people. Yeah. Be true. Yeah. Be honest and just deliver on what you say you're going to do. Yeah. It, like, this stuff isn't hard. Mm-hmm. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. If I if I act with integrity, I expect you to do the same. Yeah. And I just thought I had about three or four incidents back to back to back where I was like, hold on. I'm either about to kill somebody or let me go talk to somebody because mm-hmm. everybody's not operating in the same yeah, they don't. Um, capacity capacity that I am. Mm-hmm. So I was getting real nonchalant. Mm-hmm. Just like, look, just cut your head off and keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Cut your head off and keep it moving. Cut your head off and keep it moving. Next, 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 next. Because like the fact the past four people the the past four people have shown me that integrity don't exist no more. Right. Then my therapist said, no, Brian, what you have to do is what's happening is this. You're becoming more and more successful and you want to share your gift with the world. But the truth is, the more successful you become, you need to make your circle smaller. Hmm. I was like, okay. Yeah. She was like, so I'm telling you, what you're doing is you're, you're confusing personality with character. Wow. Everybody has a great personality, but only few, a few people like you have excellent character traits. Mm. So I was confusing personality with character, and i never forget what she said. She said, right now there's a couple dating that's about to get married because they think just because they both love tennis, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you play tennis? Me too. Yeah. Let's get married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's personality. Mm-hmm. But do I cheat when I play tennis? Right. You see what I'm saying? Did the ball go out and I'm, I'm acting like it did? See, see, we both might love tennis, and that'll get us into a relationship. But when I play tennis, am I trying to run the score up? That, that shows my character. Right. So I had to start looking at people's character and giving that more weight than just your personality. Because I'm the kind of person, Justin, you know this, I like everybody when I first meet you. Yeah. I meet you, I like you. I'm like, you cool, I'm cool too. Hey, let's, let's do lunch, whatever. After a while I learned, man, I have, and I got this written down on a card to remind myself of this. I typically have more to offer people that I meet than they have to offer me. I agree. So why am I the one being so given and this and that when I need to at least make sure you willing to bring something to the table too? Right. I don't necessarily like that to be honest with you because yeah, I just because that's just who I am. Yeah, no, I've learned, bro. But, but hey, you yeah. you learn. <laughs> you know, and, and some of the stuff I never ran into because you know I was married. Yeah. But it's like probably in the last year. It's like, especially like, it's, I've seen men flip, flip on somebody for, for a lady. I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa. Well, I don't even, bro, I don't even care like that. Right. But <laughs> you got to switch them on me out for your girl. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I, I've seen that. I've seen it for, for money. I've seen it for relationships. I've yep. seen it for, and I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't operate that way. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I've learned that I, if I keep expecting everybody to operate the way that I operate, right. I'm going to lose every You're going to lose every time. So I just, okay, you know, that's how you operate. So I'm gonna let you operate the way you operate. you operate, and I and I can I can operate with you, even from afar or close up. That's that's fine with me. This this, this guy, he's he's a white guy. He told me he said, Justin, one of the things about black people in business is y'all feel like you have to like everybody you work with. Mm. And, he said, and and white man said that. He, said, <laughs> I know. I was like, he was like, because Justin, and he was in the music industry. Yeah, he was like, I don't like half of the people that I work with. Ooh. They're just the best at what they do. Mm. He said, I need now, to learn that. Now, look, here's the thing. If you can get to like them, that's even better. That's bonus. But they're, like, just because I work with you, I, I don't have to go home and eat with you and you got to come home with my kids. He's like, no, there's there's a line. We, it is a line. We work together and I was like, okay, I can I can appreciate that. And then I've also learned to just like let those relationships kind of develop into what the person wants to turn it into. Because I turn any relationship into something It's the best thing on. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, what you just said there, it was it's, it's personality over character, over character. Mm-hmm. and that's what sometimes people can can confuse the two. Right, because character should be over personality. It should, but yeah, yeah. But yeah. but you'll see the personality. Like, oh, right. you sweet, but you ain't really looking at the character. Yeah, that's really more because we haven't gone through enough stuff for me to see all sides of you. Wow, how do you act under pressure? Yep. How do you act um, when finances are low on your end? How do you act in public? How do you act when? Um, you got a com- a personality conflict. How- yeah. See all of that stuff. It's just like dating. Yeah, it's yeah. just like dating. Everybody shows you their representative, but now how are you really when things aren't as good as the first and second date? Hmm. You know what I mean? It's just it's the same thing. So 
When I went to therapy, man, I came out of there a new person. I tell everybody when I'm on all podcasts and people talk to me, and I make sure I tell at least one therapy story because in our community, we act like we got it all together, man. Mm -hmm. No, man, go talk to somebody that's not going to judge you. Pay somebody for their professional opinion, mm -hmm. and you'll be surprised the burdens and things that will be lifted off of you once you realize um, a good one. A good therapist, right? Yeah, yeah. Once you <laughs> once you start putting some of those things, once you realize that a lot of this you can't control. Why, why do you feel like therapy, especially for black men, African yeah. Americans, yeah, is a, is a thing of like, no, you, you don't talk do about that. it yeah. because growing up, your grandmother told you that your uncle was crazy <laughs> and he was in the bathroom and he was. <laughs> So, so our 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 stigma is that everybody got a crazy uncle. Yeah. Everybody got so so the word crazy was kind of associated. And I'm being funny, but I'm serious. It's yeah. the, it's the things that were taught to us when we were little. Like just soak it up. Real man, don't cry. Mm -hmm. You know, handle your problems. You know, don't go tell nobody your problems. Those things that were taught to you are the exact opposite of what you should do. Wow. Cry. It's okay. It's an emotion. Mm -hmm. If that's how you feel. Let it go. Mm -hmm. when, uh, some The most emotional times I get is when I'm on stage, yeah. right? I don't have no problem. If my voice get to quivering and a teardrop, I don't even wipe it. I'm like, let it go. Because yeah. right? because you're reaching somebody. If I cry and something brought me to that point, I'm reaching somebody who wants to cry too. I'm just going to do it first. And I'm going to let you know, that, I, and I don't wipe them. Mm -hmm. Clo camera gonna be close and everything. Salt just running down my uh, eyes. <laughs> it, it, it's all good. Mm -hmm. Men are taught not to cry. You showing weakness. You're taught growing up, handle your problems. Don't tell everybody your business. And that's the exact opposite mm -hmm. of what therapy is. Mm -hmm. Therapy is look. I'm gonna tell you all my business. Now you tell me if I'm processing this right, processing this wrong, or help me organize my thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and and I'm and I gotta be vulnerable enough to tell that to a total stranger. Right, yeah. Yeah. But this stranger is is trained and qualified to give you a professional opinion, hopefully based on psychology yeah. and sociology. Mm -hmm. Not your friends that's gonna tell you something because half of them jealous of you anyway. Right. So I just think in our community it's just not talked about because it to us, it's a sign of weakness. To me, it's a sign of strength. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it took me time to get there too. Yeah, you know, this is one of those things. I was like, okay, because I've actually had people that be like, "Yo, you should go talk there." I'm like, Look, first of all, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and now, if you need to go, you can go ahead and go. You know what I'm saying? Right, but right. it's like, you know, like because, like for me, I've actually cried on stage just because I'm like, man, I've never talked about this until this moment. Until this moment. And then you feel it. You be like, ooh, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's then, deep. You know, it's deep. It's you know, deep. And, and, yeah. and, then, and then you start to feel it. So uh, imagine if people like yourself, me, and other, like, influencers, mm -hmm. right? And, I, and I, I, let me rephrase. I use this term lightly. Mm -hmm. you, you're an influencer. Well, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm influential. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what, that, what I mean by that is... <laughs> No, but uh, influ what I mean by that is I'm, I'm messing with you because I'm so proud of what you've done. Thank you, bro. You know, just your, you know, uh, influencer is a person that, you know, these companies come and they pay you dollars yeah. to, to rep them. All right. I'm just, I'm influential. People just listen to what I say and they, they buy some stuff. But, um, you know, I'm waiting on offers from, uh, you know, Polo. But no, seriously. Um, imagine if people who are as influential as us mm -hmm. openly said therapy's okay. Yeah. How are you an influencer or influential when you always trying to act like you got it all together? Yeah. That, that's what bothers me about the Internet and social media mm -hmm. and some influencers and influential people. Yeah. Uh, the only thing you talk about is when things are amazing. Right. You never you, you. OK, so you never want to admit that you had some therapy. Yeah. You, you never. I think authenticity is in. Yeah, it is. Authenticity is in. But you still got some people who are always trying to act like every moment of their life. And not just now, but even back in the day was great. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, I made a million dollars. I lost my first million dollars. That's the first thing I say when people do my financial training or get my financial training. I'm letting you know I'm coming from a place where I lost a million dollars in my 20s. Mm -hmm. But fear stands for fail early and responsibly. So. I was young enough to make the mistakes, so you would never have to make them. So now, right. when I recovered, mm -hmm. I ain't made them. I haven't made them since. Yeah. Right. But why aren't people afraid to say, "Hey, I lost a house. Yeah. I got divorced. Mm -hmm. I got, you know, I I got whatever your situation. I've been incarcerated. I've been whatever your situation was." Mm -hmm. Well, let me take that back. People have been incarcerated typically let you know that up front because they have a they have a redemption story, right? <laughs> they have a story of redemption. I love how people who have had addiction problems. 
you ever notice at some point they're gonna mention, you know, I'm I'm 13 days, yeah. I'm I'm good, mm -hmm. I'm I'm two years cool. Mm -hmm. People are like, okay, cool. I personally don't look at them no different. It actually gives them a stripe in my eye. Yeah. You know, but influencers and influential people hate to admit yeah. that talking to somebody or they went through something and that's okay. Yeah. So I'm just on I'm just on the campaign of hey. Let everybody know you ain't been all that. Yeah, no, that's, that's real. You know, yeah. it, that actually leads into my next question, um, too, because I was going to ask you, what was, like, your biggest lesson when it came to money? Um, don't avoid. <laughs> <laughs> when you get a tax notification, mm -hmm. open it. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. The biggest lesson I learned was, because you got to remember, I was 19 years old. Yeah. I'm getting 1099 money. Mm -hmm. At the time... Because I was a network marketer, you're trained, and you when you come from not much and you start making five figures a month, you start thinking you've arrived. Mm -hmm. The biggest mistake I made young was not understanding the tax game on a Schedule C, which mm -hmm. is the most audited form in IRS history. They grabbed the Schedule Cs first, mm -hmm. also known as the 1040s. Mm -hmm. You get audited the most because they know you don't understand nothing about money and you're not keeping no receipts, you're not keeping no records, you, you're yep. claiming you're making all this money and you haven't paid any taxes, so you're going to get audited the most. Mm -hmm. The biggest mistake I made young was not opening those IRS notices and then not understanding that really the 1099 is the beginning of your journey. It ain't the end. Mm. See, you ain't really rolling until you start getting paid on a Schedule K. Yeah. You see, yeah. now we got partnerships. Now we're getting capital gains. Now we're getting dividends. Now, yeah. So it, there's another level. You're not rolling until you got enough money to put into a trust fund, mm -hmm. right? Um, own nothing, control everything. Yep. So when you start getting trust and passive income is different than residual income. Correct. Yep. That's a different game. Mm -hmm. Early on, though, my mistake was thinking, that, hey, man, this five figures a month, mm -hmm. I done made it. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I made it on the wrong form. Yeah. Not the wrong form. Yeah, I know just the, You know what I'm saying? I made it in a way that is also very, you got to be held very accountable. Yeah. That's the biggest mistake. I also would have invested in real estate a lot sooner. Yeah. I would have invested in real estate a lot faster. Um, I'm the proud owner now of Bean Acres, 20 acres. You've been there. Yeah, yeah for sure. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's an amazing project. I wish I would have started in the real estate game earlier so that I would have more equity with time. Now I'm getting equity with dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's two kinds of equity, time and dollars. Had I started off younger, a lot of the properties would have equity based on time. Yeah. And now I'm doing equity now based on dollars, which is fine, mm -hmm. and, and location. So I just wish I would have started in the real estate game a lot earlier. Yeah, that's yeah. a big one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I think I think for me it was, uh, and I, I, you know, I'm still young, but... Just uh, not buying all the stuff you wanted to buy at the beginning, you know, because mm -hmm. like when you kind of what you said, when you don't come from a lot, when you start making something, you want to go do all the stuff you couldn't do when you didn't have a lot. It's right. Like, it's almost like when you you not with your parents, you can eat ice cream all day at your grandparents. Like, like I'm about to tear, I'm about to tear ice cream up. up. Yeah. And then you get sick of it. You're like, man, OK, I don't like that flavor no more because I ate too much. And it was like for me, it was like. It was the Gucci's, the Louis. I'm like, man, this is fun. I never thought I could afford this stuff. Give me two of them. <laughs> <laughs> but then you start get, you start saying, man, like, like kind of what you're saying. Like I, I look back, you know, on some stuff. I'm like, man, I could have bought a house with that. Yeah, I could do so. So as you start growing, you say, okay, look, let me be more intentional right. about my spending, how I'm spending money, mm -hmm. why I'm spending. Even with like the, the studio here, I was like, okay, I was actually about to buy another car. I ain't gonna lie to you. Right. But I was like, okay, you know, <laughs> do I need three? Do I need four? Do I, do I need, let me let me invest. Into you know something that I can provide more value. It could become another you know business maybe one day. But Absolutely. At least at least get more impact. And that was a di I wouldn't have made that decision seven what a, years ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not, may, probably maybe not even five years ago. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. I, I probably would have got the car. Yeah. But like at this point, I'm like, now nah, we got to make wiser investments and in things that can continue to, to add grow. something. Because then at some point, these things that you're building can go still do those things. Absolutely, yeah. Those because sit anyway. they're going to be there. Yes. They're going to they're gonna be there. I went I went this weekend and looked at 13 additional acres. Wow. You know, you would you would think like, man, you're doing bean acres. You're building an amphitheater. I'm building tree houses. I'm, it's on the water. Yeah. And I went and looked at an additional 13 acres wow. just to make sure that just to make I, I, I want to stay sharp, stay aggressive. Keep my options open. Mm -hmm. um, always have more land or abundance than necessary so that I can create opportunities for other people. There we go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, 
You did, I mean, you don't know this. You don't need to hear me say it, but of course you did the right thing. The car that you want is going to be there. This right here will provide the value necessary for you to go get the car. So create the asset first. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? And, and look at you, man. Thank One you, more man. time, man. Let me, now let me just ask you. You're not a Browns fan. We only got that because it's orange, yeah, right? Just okay, okay. Just pass the bread. <laughs> okay. I'm a Colts fan. Indianapolis. Yeah, no. I actually thought about getting, I'm going to probably get Run the Play put on there. Okay, Matter yeah. Fact, I can do that now. I got, yeah. Now I got some, something I can put on there. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, yeah, I got to put just make it, on there. I said, Okay, it's orange because we're yeah. not doing the brown. No, no, no. Shout out to Cleveland. Like, like, <laughs> hey, Deshaun Watson, let's make it happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he paid his. T- he'll pay his time, and then he'll be back. He'll be so, back. Yeah, everybody gets a. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, what kind of story is that? Uh, redemption. Redemption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's good. Any, okay. I, network marketing in business and life, in my opinion, is like relation. The relationship game. Yeah. Mastering a relationship game, you're really good with relationships. Is there anything that you've done consistently, or you like, man, this is something I do consistently to make sure I maintain relationships with people? Yes. And and see, again, part of me loves this, and part of me, I'm not gonna say, hey, I don't like this about myself. Yeah. I text three people on the way here, and just said, hey, just checking on you. Haven't heard from you in a while. Everything good. Mm-hmm. But. I don't know that people do that to me. Now they might. I don't. I, they, they, let me take that back. They check on me, but put it this way: the people I be checking on, they check, right. checking on you. Check on yeah, me. Uh-huh. Hey, be you good? Let's, mm-hmm. let's hang out. Let's ride yeah. the four wheel. Let's mm-hmm. ride the ATVs. Let's yeah. hang out. But I just make sure. You got to understand. I lost my father in 2020, February first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you lose somebody, it. It, I, I, actually, I've lost quite a few of my friends, unfortunately, recently. Not COVID or nothing. I've had just a stretch this past year where I lost um, two of my best friends from middle school. My father passed in 2020. So you start to realize how precious life is, mm-hmm. and then you don't want to have any regrets. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just reach out to people. Hey, just checking on you. You good? Mm-hmm. You know. So I make sure that when I think about a person, reach out. Mm-hmm. Whereas I used to prolong that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll check on them. They're yeah. good. We'll check on Facebook. No. Social media is not it's starting to sound like I'm anti social media, yeah, right? This whole right. thing. Like but it. but no, it's it's um social media is not checking on a person just because you're looking at their photos and they look okay. Mm-hmm. We've all learned that that don't mean nothing. Yeah. I, I I text three people literally and just say, You good, I ain't heard from you in a while. Mm-hmm. And so what I do is just make sure that the lines of communication are open so that we can always um experience different things. Whether it be business ventures, you know, JVs, affiliate, mm-hmm. or nothing but dinner and conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. I value new relationships just as much as I value my old ones. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So when I think about a person, I reach out immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. That's a good tip. Cause yeah. I always try to give people just like a different play when it comes to relationships that they may not have. Yeah. You know, that, that they may not be doing. Um, yeah. You're one of the best I've seen. You're one of the best I've seen at building and maintaining relationships. I appreciate that. I mean, if you haven't done this, you got to tell the story. You sent Jamie Foxx some shoes. Mm-hmm. Have you? Do everybody know that? <laughs> to me, to me, that was the that was the play. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you sent him some shoes mm-hmm. because. It, and what did that do? Next thing you know, y'all friends. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And it's just like I'm like Jay. No, he good at maintaining good relationships. Um, me and you met, and then you introduced me to a mutual friend mm-hmm. that I have no respect for. <laughs> None now at all. Yeah. None. Sure. Yeah, same, you know, same. no respect. But it didn't hurt me and you, right? Because you're the kind of person that's like, okay, that didn't work, but that ain't got no reflection on me and you. Whereas I'm like, like I'm like, look, I came in with Jay, I'm leaving with Jay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't have to respect who you introduced me to, but you were able to see who's real and who's fake. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you have always been good at maintaining great relationships. And well, so what, let me. I mean, this ain't my podcast, but what do you do? Who, yeah, I think I think it's some of the things you you said. I think you always have to be just aware. It's like it's almost like when you're dating somebody, like you pay attention to stuff without them saying it. Like it's like okay, I can see that could be a need, or I can see that could be something. Because I like when I was with Jamie and his guys, I heard like that he was just like, man, really, people don't really do that much for him. Because a lot of times, they think you, think you got that, everything. You would assume that what people you would just do stuff for people, and then, and I I actually ended up doing something for his manager too. Because I was like, he was like, man, don't nobody ever do anything. Like people sometimes do stuff for him. They don't never do nothing for me. But I was like. I didn't do it for any other reason. Just like y'all, it's just like I just wanted to sow into just gesture. Them. Yeah, yeah. You put out some good, um, you know, energy, energy. and uh, I think I try to do that a lot. Um, checking in, but just being intentional about like following up, like really following up, sitting mm-hmm. down, mm-hmm. and uh, just I think it goes back just really caring about people. What I've learned, Brian, this was a hard pill for me to swallow. Is like when you're building relationships, you got to be okay 
being a better friend to people than they are to you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's basically what it boils down yeah. to. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm, I, I'm, I think you can't stop having a hard time. <laughs> Because the thing is, yeah, like yeah, that's, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and my mom has it sometimes too, and I and I even try to work on this work, and she'll always call and she do it, and it's like she, I can tell she's like, man, nobody does that for me. Mm. And then I'm like, but at the same time, that typically people aren't. They're not going to. Most people only care about themselves. Dang, that's so, deep. Yeah. yeah. And so this, that, and that's sometimes it gets me frustrated because there's times I've heard stuff or people tell me something somebody said, and I'm like, dang, really? I would have never did that. I would have never did. But that. Um, I understand that's how you can operate. Right. But I've, what I've learned is not to allow that to change how I am with people. Mm. because In I'm, general. Yeah, in general. Right. You may okay, tweak that person. Yeah, I'll tweak that. Okay, cool. But I, I understand it that. It doesn't become your new worldview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I got you. Actually, matter of fact, what's funny is like my course that, that I built is based on how to build and manage relationships mm. in business. Um, because that's what somebody else said, bro, you're really good at it. You should really think about what you do. And so yeah. I literally put down a whole bunch of things that I've done over the last... 15 years that I do consistently to help grow relationships and then just giving it time. Yeah, that's you know? dope, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. Bro. No, that's good. I, I, I've noticed that and it's intentional and you're great at it. Yeah. You're great at it. it yeah, no question. I love, I know we got to wrap up. Oh, is anybody come on the show, man? I, I think that's a good segue. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro, <laughs> this transition. Anybody come on the show. Then I got one more question for you. Okay. I always like to like, just give them something because like, you didn't have to come here and. Um, it, it's, it's, I, I'll grab it for you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We come bearing gifts. Yeah, yeah, hey. Like so. Hey, man. This one is a book. I just, I've been liking this book a lot lately. Um, Speak Trust. Okay. I've been sharing that one a lot. Now, now I know you got Bean Acres. Oh. You got your tent. You know what I'm saying? You can put it in. You, you, you see, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, you gonna have people coming to so this. This seat, uh, sleeps eight, six people. C- come on, man. Eleven by nine dome tent. So I just figured. Oh man, know, people come out there. Did I tell you it was okay to cry? <laughs> <laughs> didn't I? Didn't I say it's okay to cry, man? So oh, I gotta start bearing gifts. Yeah. Hey, man, the speed of trust. You read this, one, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm reading it now, so I've been sharing it. David actually shared it with me. And yeah. He, he talks about, like, some of the stuff we're talking about, like, trust in business, trust in relationships, and trust in your service. It's a lot of different stuff, so I'm, this like, good halfway stuff, through man. it. So I came just wanted... in empty-handed, and I'm leaving with gifts, man. Yeah, nah, it's just... okay to cry, y'all. Yeah. Man. <laughs> let, let, it, let it fly, man. Yeah. No, nah, I appreciate it, man. Nah, I appreciate it. I appreciate you, it, man. This is going to be a billion acres. You know, you better believe. I've learned a lot out there, man. Yeah. One thing is, never leave your tent up <laughs> so, this one will be well taken care of, way better than the one I had before. Yeah. Uh, cats got in it, raccoons, foxes, and all kind of stuff. Guy, I thought I could just leave the tent up. Yeah. I don't know why. I'm not outdoors, man, but I'm learning a lot. But no, nah, this will be great, man. We're going to start doing some things. Yeah. Cigar night, wine night. There we go. NFL football on the big screen. Uh, um, playing games by the pond, tent night. So this is perfect, man. There we go. Yeah, yeah. But, for the people that don't know where to find you, can you tell them where to find you um, and then anything you want to share with them about businesses, speaking, whatever? Yeah, for sure, man. I'm Brian N. Bean. B-R-I-A-N-N is my middle initial, so you're going to have two N's, right? B-R-I-A-N and then N, as in never ask me what N stands for. Mm-hmm. Bean, B-E-A-N-E. I'm Brian N. Bean on all platforms, okay, right? Good. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Brian N. Bean. Um, the main thing right now that I'm promoting is my ABCs mm-hmm. of wealth. Okay. I, like I literally I take you through 26 lessons they never taught you in schools. Like and it's about money. We we learn the alphabet, we learn our ABCs, but nobody taught you the ABCs of money. I like it. And ABCs of wealth. So look for that being promoted on um, all the platforms, including YouTube, including Facebook, including Instagram. And I'm even starting to get my TikTok on. I see you on TikTok, man. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you your reels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're starting to pop up. Good. And um uh, even on TikTok, Brian and Bean. So look out for the ABCs of money. Okay. I need you on the Instincts Podcast. Yep. I need all yep. y'all to go to, to the instinctspodcast.com and make sure you guys opt in and, and join our um, our database, the Instincts Podcast, because it's shot out on the pond at Bean Acres, P-O-N-D, cast.com. And make sure you guys join the database. And I'll be giving you guys, if you, what, in the, what, what coupon code you want to give? I'll give them a discount on the money series for you. Uh, run the play. Run the play. Run the play. Run the All right, cool. Yep. If you go, if you go to the instinctspodcast.com or any of the social media platforms and in the coupon code you put run to play, I'll get them a discount on ABCs of money. There we go. Is that I cool? That, That's yep. a partnership, man. I love hey, it's gotta it. be reciprocal, it's man. Got to. I like yeah, it. I love yeah. It. I appreciate it, man. Well, listen, guys. That's another episode. Y'all just heard from my guy, Brian Bean. He gave you some top plays when it comes to business, relationships, building the 
like you just talk about building yourself so you can build a business. Appreciate y'all for jumping in. Y'all got some plays. Now go run it. What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official run to play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's run to play all across the world. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just wanting it all. Do you know what it's like?